My name is Roy Kirby. I'm from Marshfield, Massachusetts, and I'm a 54-year-old um, entrepreneur, carpenter, woodworking that got to get rid of my gum. My name is Roy Kirby from Marshfield, Massachusetts. I'm a carpenter, woodworker, entrepreneur, and I'm also bipolar. When 1993 is when I found out I was in the process of running five charitable events and they were all for uh, raising money for organizations and uh, I basically peaked manic on the, uh, the second one I did so the other ones I didn't get a chance to experience uh, the success of them but they all went off flawlessly. So I'd like to talk about how I feel about being dealing with mental illness and uh, and going through those years and also growing up in a home where my dad, when he was 33 years old, uh, he lost his business uh, due to uh, uh, an episode. Um, first he was diagnosed paranoid schizophrenic and later in the years they found out that he was misdiagnosed. My dad uh, owned a pet shop, and uh, um, we used to go over there and play there all the time, and uh, it was kind of tough growing up as a teenager. When, what I've experienced being a consumer of mental illness is that um, if you have a very, very positive attitude and you experience other people around you that may be going through the same thing, you can deal with it, and you can deal with it enough that um, you can make it a su success out of your life um, and yes the next day you can end up in the hospital I've been hospital hospitalized three times in um, since uh, year 2000 but after the year 2000 my last uh, hospitalization um, I kind of uh, came to grips with it um, didn't go to my groups or anything but uh, there I was in, in my bed and I kind of realized what my dad went through. Uh, anybody that does go through this type of thing, you realize that your loved ones don't always come into the hospital to see you, uh, especially sometimes on the weekends uh, and if you don't get a pass. So I kind of like asked for forgiveness to my dad, who was a teenager selfishly, not visiting him all the time. And for some strange reason, my life turned around then. I was able to get involved with a volunteer program we uh, built a million dollar skate park at no cost to the com community and uh, we raised three hundred thousand dollars cash before that i received kawanian of the year award that was uh, first time the award was ever given out in our community um, and that was really before my first episode then after that i uh, experienced uh, a dream that I always had was to buy this antique sawmill. It's called a Hatch Mill, and it's in Marshfield, one of the oldest sawmills um, in the country. It goes back to 1753. When it was a sawmill, it was a reciprocal saw. The blade went up and down. I kind of looked at it afterwards like my bipolar. You, you don't know what you're going to experience. So right now, we've got it registered with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Historical Commission, and we've applied for the National Registry um, Historical Places, and we're well on our way. This has been a great success for me. Um, not to keep talking about what I've experienced, but to people that are watching this video, I want you to all to know that if you hang in there, um, I always tell people going through a major depression that this golden thread hangs from the sky and when you're at your lowest point it doesn't work for everybody but if you can grab onto it don't let go it will not break and things will change and these are from my own experiences when I've been depressed and I've been at the lowest point of depression where you've had every mood um, I kind of consider myself a master of all moods uh, it, it is a mood disorder that I do have but when I was um, in 1993, I had never written, read a book in my life.
um, honestly say that I was a D, F student growing up in the school systems. I always went to school, but I could never hang in there in English and stuff like that. Once I got out of school, I kind of became hungry. And I read my first book right after I got my first episode in the hospital, and it was called Undaunted Courage, written by Stephen Ambrosian, and was about Meriwether Lewis, Lewis and Clark expedition. Well, Meriwether Lewis was bipolar, and they talked about how he experienced his depression laying in the canoes, not coming out for 13 days, where his, his expedition still ran forward. And it was incredible what this gentleman accomplished, and Thomas Jefferson said he was one of the greatest Americans that ever lived. So, the, there's all these people in history, we all heard about them. Um, two of my favorite, and what I learned more about by reading um, what I could, short stories or videotapes, what I would get on, um, you know, A&E and the History Channel about people dealing with mental illness. I wish companies and employers would realize that there's two bus that are on Mount Rushmore, two, and two of those people were dealt with mental illness, Abraham Lincoln and uh, Teddy Roosevelt. People never realized Teddy Roosevelt used to go on these safaris to Africa, and the reason why is because he was dealing with depression, he had to get away from everybody. And if you ever watch any videos of him way back when, man, you talk about a manic person, he never stopped. You watch him talking in speeches, he was incredible. But I want to let you know this, that through my experiences, um, in, 19, in 2003 I received Citizen of the Year in my community because of involvement on a, a volunteer group building a skate park for the kids that I really cared about and now working on this Hatch Mill project which we're going to have to raise about a million dollars to uh, complete this whole entire project. We, 1986, I had it in the back of my mind, I wanted to get this place where I was a carpenter, a woodworker and uh, we ended up buying it about three years ago, uh, 3.5 acres, the pond, two historical buildings for one dollar. So I tell everybody out there, write down your dreams, stick with them, and for some strange reason, it will come out from the, uh, when you have to make decisions with these forks of the road, and they will come true. But another one that, here we are coming into the football season. A lot of people don't realize this, but the person that the Super Bowl trophy is named after, Vince Lombardi, was bipolar. I watched a documentary on him and his wife and his daughter said that. Here's a man that went to church every day to pray to God for forgiveness, how he was mean to his players because he strived for perfection. And I know all you consumers out there, you know what that's about. When you've got to be perfect and people say, oh no, 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 you can't. Everybody who's mental, mentally ill can work for good companies and they can work to uh, do things in their, in their community. Um, if you really ever want to experience greatness, goodness, play Santa Claus sometime and, and uh, you watch how everybody warms up to you and stuff. So uh, um, I just want to say thank you very much and uh, I hope this uh, video helps out so many people in the country. Thank you.